My normal output, if I'm making beats, it can be upwards of three or five or 10 beats in a day. And I'm making simplified versions of what is gonna be a song eventually. I really do race through the process of creating a kernel or a demo of a song. I'm trying to not think about it as much as possible. I want to avoid overthinking it, number one. And number two, I'm trying to create as many of them as I can. Ultimately, I'd rather have a poorly executed version of a good idea than a great executed version of a mediocre idea. Because at the end of the day, it's the idea. That's the part that I'm taking. I might re-record everything about that demo. My biggest tool is getting to a place of forgetting about how they sound. So with the MPC, oftentimes I will save the beat, turn the machine off, walk away, and come back the next day. And the critical part about this for me is I can't listen to the beat for 15 minutes on loop, even though that can feel really good. Because if I do that, I've found that I can trick my ear into getting some kind of emotional attachment to a thing, regardless of what it actually sounds like. In essence, what I'm trying to do is listen to the music that I'm making through someone else's ears. Because I'm trying to achieve ob objectivity, or as close as I can get to objectivity. If I can put the thing away, come back with fresh ears, I'll oftentimes go listen to something else. I'll go listen to Kind of Blue, get out of that headspace, and then come back with fresh ears. At that point, I can oftentimes assess what's worth pursuing and what's not. Nineteen seventy six came about from finding the horns for that song and just realizing immediately. This was great, I gotta use this. I knew that I needed something on the top end of it. It didn't scream to me, get a rapper or get a vocalist. I still wanted to keep it kind of within the MPC. Uh, and that was a point where I just started playing around with different arrangements of the horns and putting vocal things on top of it. And it all came together very quickly. You know, that's a, again an example of, you know, putting two things together and the way they came together felt so right, even though on paper or in the abstract, it, it, there was nothing about it that would have indicated that it would work. <laughs> that song started with me practicing that drum groove and stumbling across it was it was a sort of a, a my modified take on the funky drummer break and it, it just felt right and it felt good sometimes i will just hit record and go without really thinking about what is this going to become or or be able to be turned into write a I demo up an a section in a b section in the turnarounds uh, on the fender roads real fast and kind of at that point create a sort of a mental image in my head of what's going to happen in the song this is a rarity because i recorded the drums first i basically guessed at an arrangement when i did the drum passage and now I'm, I'm forced into that arrangement from every point after. Um, and once I sketched out the A and the B sections and the turnarounds, I kind of knew where the song had to go. And at that point, I'm just filling in the parts and recording stuff. Another fun fact about that song is, it's the only song in my life I've ever made where it was off the grid, but the horns were from a sample pack that I chopped up and put in the MPC but it wasn't on a grid, so I couldn't sequence it. So I l literally played the horn parts by hitting the pads for three and a half minutes for that song. P. 
piece of what started as a kernel of an idea that I heard on a record and immediately in my head I heard it as something else this will happen to me sometimes I'll, I'll hear a, a, a snippet of a song and I, my mind will reinterpret a part of it so the idea from piece of what came from kind of reinterpreting this thing from a record and then just going and executing it probably on uh, either a, a Fender Rhodes or, or you know like a demo it up on a keyboard and then mapping out the drums and everything and uh, hiring out the horn stabs and the strings and everything and, and that song very much wanted to be a vocal thing it felt to me like it was it's just what it wanted to be. And so I called Jordan Brown and he was up for it and off we go. There's one other way to get a kernel of a song that we didn't really talk about and it's rare and it doesn't happen often, but it's worth mentioning. And that is cannibalizing an idea that was intended for something else. I will get asked to record music for, you know, a, an ad spot or a TV spot or a show or something like that. And uh, more often than not, the final music that I submit won't get accepted. And I always make a point when I do this to record something that I like. So even if I'm getting asked to do ad work, or something like that. My hard line is I'm not willing to make music that I wouldn't want my name on. This pays off because when that gets turned down and that music isn't going to get used, I will just take that thing and I, now I've got a kernel. It's already started. There have been a number of tunes over the years uh, that were that. In fact, the Freshman Lettered on the Fun Ones started out as a demo for a Diet Coke ad that didn't stick, which was fine. Uh, you know, uh, no harm, no foul. And I took that demo and turned it into that song. Subscribe to soundfly.com for this course and all of their creative music courses.